We've got this really interesting article, courtesy of Resident Advisor, talking about the lack of representation once it comes to um, people in, what well, comes to music, I guess, in general. It's not specifically to do with DJs, it's things just to do with the music industry overall. And I'm a bit confused by it. I've got to be completely honest, because again, I have a very unique stance when it comes to these sort of things, because again, like I said, I'm a uh, up and coming DJ myself, even though I've been doing this for 10 years and I've been promoting nights for like five plus years and stuff. When it comes to getting involved in this sort of scene and kind of taking the next step and playing in actual clubs, I'm a young pup, I'm new, I'm fresh-faced, no one bloody knows who I am, no one gives a shit, right? So I have seen it from a different point of view as in like how difficult it is to kind of get yourself up the ladder. And it kind of, if anything, I've always said, I think trying to make it as a DJ, especially for myself, it's not something I want to do full-time only. I have many interests I want to write, which I'm doing at the moment. I obviously take um, brilliant pictures, um, loads of nightlife stuff, loads of just documentary stuff that I kind of uploading very soon. Obviously, you've seen on my website. If you haven't checked it, axinozinga.com. Click on the photography section. You'll see loads of my great pictures on there. Um, obviously, do the podcast. I obviously do different bits of video content on here on my channel as well. So I don't want to do DJing only, but I do want to do it to a level where I'm able to obviously, you know, pay the rent and be able to sustain myself and do the things I enjoy to do. It doesn't need much, you know, just a couple of good clubs that I respect and I love. I'd love to be, you know, a guest there on a, maybe a regular basis, you know. You think of the ones that I've kind of visited in the past, the Robert Johnsons, the Berghines, the Club Divisionaires, um, the Palomas, the Folds here in London. Yeah, the the calls, all these places are great places that I'd love to play at regularly just to kind of, you know, um, keep myself creatively peaked and stuff and obviously be able to share music that I'm really into with a kind of, you know, rapturous crowd. But there's no denying that it's very difficult to make it as a DJ in any way, shape or guy, even if you want to do it professionally, if you want to do it part time, it doesn't matter. It's really difficult to do so. Because it's one of, like I said, one of maybe the most easiest and maybe the lowest barriers of entry in terms of entering when it comes to the music industry, like a craft or like a job, right? It's something that most people can do um, if you spend a little bit of time educating yourself on how to beat match and stuff. Like, And again, I come from it from the point of view of like, if you have decent musical taste and then you figure out how to do the technicalities, you can be proficient DJ in a very, very short space of time. Then of course, you then add on the marketing bit and branding yourself and putting yourself out there then it just becomes one of those kind of journeys that you just kind of hope and pray that you get there sooner rather than later. But it is very difficult. I kind of relate a lot to that to football here in the UK. Everyone here plays football. I guess similar to the States, everyone plays basketball. So the level of like basketball players in the States is far better than it would be anywhere else in the world because there's so many people playing basketball yet so many opportunities or so many spots, so little spots for you to be pro that there would be some people that just get kind of left by the wayside. Same thing happens here in the UK. There's so many great DJs out there who don't play regularly in places who I probably play more than them in places who are far better than I am, right? Who just don't get gigs. So it means that there's such a dearth, there's such an overabundance of talent and a lack of real opportunities for people to play that it makes it difficult to make it. And also the ladder of progression or yeah yeah ladder of progression whatever it is right the, the the kind of the way for you to kind of get from point a to point b is really difficult too it's not very straightforward we don't really have a resident dj culture here in the uk for the most part um nights are very much um centered around big names who can sell tickets they don't really try and promote local acts or whatnot because you know maybe there's just not the money involved and it's too risky who knows but there's no real clear path so most what most people do they kind of band together, they set up a collective, they put on their own nights, they stream on, or they kind of play on NTS, all these kind of places to kind of get, you know, get a little bit of clap that way and then try and use that to kind of, you know, um, amplify their voice. But it's not easy and it's not linear. So because of that, I have a hard time sometimes understanding when people come at it and just look at it purely from a racial point of view or from a gendered point of view. Because for me, it feels like most people who are good at DJing don't get the opportunity to kind of follow their dreams in any kind of meaningful way because there's too many holders in place. The promoters and the event bookers, you know, book the same old people again and again and again. The customers maybe don't want to hear from the new fans because, again, that's something people don't really kind of figure out in their head or try and kind of, you know, um, how would you say? Something that people don't really try to come to grips with or to wrestle in their brain, whether or not kind of fans or customers in general don't want to hear from people like me playing at big clubs. They want to, if they go out and they spend 20, 30 pounds, they want to hear a quote unquote professional, not somebody who's trying to make their way through. Who knows if that's the truth? I'm just kind of throwing those things out there. But in general, 
it is less of a gender thing, less of a racial thing, and more so just a lack of opportunities for everybody overall. We've all seen the lineups of all these big festivals, don't need to name them, of all these big club nights. They've definitely got the same old faces playing again and again and again. It's not fresh, it's not new, and it isn't really allowing people the opportunity or the idea or the possibility that they're ever going to be able to kind of grace those stages because there is no linear path that doesn't look like there would ever be one. So what's the point of even trying? So when I see articles like this on Resident Advisor, that's say 86 percent of black artists in the uk experience barriers to progression says new survey i would say that goes for everybody it's not just black artists um and i would also say when it comes to the music industry it's very difficult to kind of judge it because it's the most um corrupt um crime ridden crime crime ridden um dream selling industry known to man do you know what i mean just look at what happened the other day with the karen civil situation just now i saw a clip of jonah lucas basically coming on radio and saying oh i felt bad for airing out karen civil i should have said those things in public i was in my emotions like what she's she allegedly you put it out there that she allegedly stole 20 60 thousand dollars for you or something right um under the guise that she was going to help promote his brand and kind of revive his career he was saying that he was in a situation where he was you know, really backs against the wall. He just had a kid. He was trying to look after his kid, obviously. He needed the money to come in and it was looking like music might not be his thing and he wanted to give it one big last Hail Mary, but he wanted to make sure that Hail Mary was actually going to go somewhere, at least, and give him some sort of fighting chance. It didn't happen. Karen Civil kind of basically pocketed the money and ran away without really delivering on any of the deliverables. And, you know, he obviously rightly got angry to have a back and forth on, on Clubhouse, but that was a legit beef. That wasn't like something he invented in his head. Everybody knows... What, how sensitive people get when it comes to money and when it comes to people not delivering on the money you've given to them, especially somebody that you think is, you know, a quote-unquote sister, somebody's maybe fighting the same fight as you, somebody who came from the same struggle as you, then deciding to scam you, is again evidence that it's never racial, it's never personal, it's just a music business. It's full of absolute cunts. So it's no surprise that there are some black artists out there who generally feel like there's barriers. But I say there's barriers exist for everybody. Like I said, just look at the lineups of all their favorite festivals and club nights. They're all the same. Rough, hardly any of them change. If they do change, it's performative. They slash the venues in half. They put half and half women who don't really have any business being at the festival because they don't necessarily garner that sort of crowd. Or they don't play the sort of music that the people would like. It just kind of puts them, you kind of, putting them purposely in a bad situation so you can basically prove yourself to be right in terms of like see that's why we books for Envar see that's why we both Joseph, Joseph Capriati Cipriati sorry whatever his name is right I like if you pronounce his surname sorry to use as an example that's what they basically do so I'm not really sure about these um, articles but let's continue anyway the article said led by the black lives in music the damning report lays bare the systemic racism in the music industry the UK organisation of black lives in music has published a damning report on racism 2,000 people responded to the survey which launched in March those surveys um, reported a range of discriminatory acts barriers to progression based on their ethnicity income inequalities and more here are some key findings 86% of black music creators agree that there are barriers to progression that right this rises to 89 percent of black women and 91 percent of black creators who are disabled of course that is so very true like i said it would appear for everybody obviously i think the other thing that people don't really talk about too much is like there are obviously barriers in the music industry but the really bit the bit that's super obvious that there's definitely some racism at play is when certain artists aren't allowed to perform live in certain venues certain people aren't allowed to do you know meet and greets they're banned to do like kind of guerrilla pop-up sort of events and whatever it may be mostly from like the uk drill uk rap sort of scene that is definitely a form of discrimination based um mostly based on the color of the person's skin where they're from and who their fans are right that's basically mostly what it is but when it comes to barriers of progression in the industry i think that exists legitimately for every single person i can't imagine it's easy to be like for instance with all the with all the whispering r&b singers out there i can't imagine it's easy to be like a r&b singer who's also a mixed race or light skin who also happens to whisper right that's just your style i bet it's really difficult for you to burst through because there's so many people in front of you doing bits or just hanging on who aren't gonna win, who are not willing to step aside and then the industry itself is also not willing to give you a chance because they want the only people they want only want people that are clapped up or that have the numbers so it's a real cyclical game it continues 88 percent of black music professionals agree that there are barriers to progression uh three and five 63 percent black music creators have experienced direct or indirect racism in the music industry and more have experienced racial microaggressions yeah for sure i could definitely see that the most i've suffered as in sort of like racial profiling that sort of nonsense has definitely been from clubs inside nightclubs sorry whether it's people coming up and asking me for drugs whether it's me getting searched really heavily or aggressively 
um, at the door, whether it's bouncers kind of keeping an eye on you because of what you look like. That's mostly what I kind of suffer when I go to clubs. But again, I'm so used to it now. I just kind of, you know, block it out and don't really pay too much attention uh, because, you know, I don't really care to engage. Um, I don't want to get myself riled up. I'm here to have a good time, get drunk, get high and go home. It continues. A favorite percent of black music creators have felt the need to change their appearance because of their race or ethnicity, rising to 43% of black women, which is, again, sad, but an indictment more so on the the disgusting nature of some people that exist in the new music industry. 58%, 58% sorry, black music professionals earn 100% of the income from music compared to 69% of white. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's low, isn't it? Again, maybe it's the music they're into. Um, not necessarily the most mainstream. At the moment, UK rap is kind of mainstream. But then again, you have to look at the artists who are popping off UK rap. And it's, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory why they're the ones that are the most popular. But in general, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? It's difficult. It continues. Black artists who also reported uh, being granted less studio time than their white counterparts refused event from performance opportunities, given told to change the type of music they create, or being typical as boring or being as typecast as urban artists, uh, regardless of their musical intentions. This is the first of its kind of survey, which holds a mirror up to the UK music industry, showing that it's like Ekelax, the CEO of BLM, Charissa Beaumont. The report highlights um, racist culture and behaviours. So yeah, tough go for most people around. Like I said, I think the issue, especially when it comes to my sector, which is, you know, DJing, dance music, electronic stuff. For the most part, I have to say, like I said before, there is just definitely an issue in terms of lack of diversity overall, regardless of your sexual orientation, regardless of your race, color, creed. Like, it's just in general, everyone's really suffering. Everyone's really suffering. Everyone's really struggling. There's not a lot of opportunities out there because, you know, some parts of the world aren't open. Or if they are, you're required to take a test beforehand, which is obviously super pricey, depending on where you may be. So it is really a mad situation. All in all, has to be said. Definitely is a mad situation. But yeah, check out the article if you um, required it. If you want to, you can read the full report. I'll put the link in the show description. But yeah, that's courtesy of R8.